a Premiership hero, and he joins us on stage. Please, a round of applause for 1988 Premiership winner, Glenn Nissen. Started with the Panthers, 84, under Tim Sheens. Yes, yeah, started uh, in 84. Um, uh, came out, no, uh, we came out of the Jersey Flag side under 18s. And um, that was, in 1984, it was third grade back then. And so I was a young fella and while like, you're playing guys that have had a first grade career and they're coming back down and you got the young fellas coming up. So it was a, it was a pretty tough initiation to be honest. <laughs> I was, uh, the first uh, six months I was playing, I reckon I was a cardboard statue out in the field just looking at blokes going, oh my God, what am I doing out here? <laughs> yeah. uh, Penrith has changed a lot. I lived down there myself for about eight years. Um, and, and it was actually earlier today to, to pick up the great Ray Blacklock, which is great to have him here. Um, it must have been an interesting place, Penrith, in those days. Yeah, it was. So the club had just sort of, Timmy Sheens had just come to the club and... Uh, like Grail Alexander and Johnny Carrot and those guys are sort of coming into the club. And uh, but I remember like, we'd only trained a couple of times a week, and our third session was on a on a Saturday morning, and uh, we'd finished training at 11 o'clock, and it was straight to the Red Cow for a, a can lunch and a few beers. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's way different. Uh, now I'm trying to cast back 85, the playoff against Manly Tuesday night to put you into the finals. Were you a part of that side that, that played the finals? You went on to play Parramatta the, the next week and got absolutely pumped, but were you in that side? No. No, I, I got grabbed in 84 um, and probably didn't feel like I belonged, actually. Uh, so I, I played a few, uh, 84, 85, 86 um, in reserve grade and 23s it was back then. Um, I, I made my debut in 86 in a, um, I think it was a Panasonic Cup game. Came off the bench. Um, I was playing fullback and I was marking um, Gary Jack, I think it was, and he was this Australian fullback at the stage. So I was sort of a bit googly eyed then as well. So anyway, I asked this to Larry Corridor a couple of months back in, in Queensland when we did one of the nights up there, and uh, I asked him, when you had the TV game, did you put on a bit of swish when, they, when you all knew the TV was? showing that the game was on telly and all that stuff. Because, you know, keep in mind in those days in the 80s, a game on telly was a big deal now. It's, you know, they show every game live and it's as common as mud. But in those days, you know, it wasn't around as much the TV games, only a handful of games each week. So, yeah, put a bit of switch like, uh, you know, uh, a show off or because the cameras are watching or, you know, stuff like that. I wouldn't say I put on any switch, but you're probably more nervous because you know everyone's watching and, you know, you drop the ball miss a try or something, the next day at work you just cop it, the other way you never live it down, so yeah, I think it just made you a bit more nervous actually. <laughs> uh, 88, you went to the Bulldogs, terrific year for the club, you obviously won the competition 24-12 over Balmain, uh, you were the favourites in that grand final, Balmain came from fifth, uh, Penrith in a Tuesday night fifth place playoff. Um, you scored a try in the grand final towards the back end, um, what was it like playing around you know, the likes of Mortimer, Farrah, Tunks, those sort of players? Mate, it was absolutely a dream come true. I remember um, we'd won the comp in reserve grade in 87 at Penrith. Um, and I just sort of saying what Greg was saying earlier about the, the depth of the reserve grade back then. Um, our Penrith, our, against Manly, yeah. And our Penrith side, our front run, our pack for reserve grade had Dale Broman and Tony Butterfield. Our second rowers were Mark Geyer and Warren Fenton. So we had the young guys coming up and but the hard heads coming back and yeah it was pretty amazing. But I remember when um, I went to Canterbury at the start of 88 and um, Phil Gould actually coached me in under 14s when I was a junior when he was uh, captain of Penrith um, and he was captain he was coaching Canterbury reserve grade in the 87 series so he actually took me over to Canterbury in 88 and we got the first training session and sort of you know I'm only young and sort of nervous of it and he's just gone He's pulled me aside and he's just pointed around to the dressing room and you got the Mortimers, the Lambs, the Farrows, Fakes, Gillespie, Langmack, Tunks. You know, it was just a, an incredible sight. And he just said, he said, have a look at this. He said, mate, just enjoy the ride. And you know what? And, and like, I couldn't lace up any of those players' boots, to be honest. But, but to go out onto a field with those sort of players, that's sort of, 
makes you a bit more confident, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't want to be you know, the other, any other side, you know? Yeah. Well, I think, I think you're underestimating yourself a little bit there because in those days, wingers, you know, these days now, they're, they're just finishers, pretty much. I mean, for me, Jason Nightingale's a terrific finisher of the game, but that's really all they do. They just kind of wait for the ball. In those days, a winger was a much different role. You know, you were sort of floating in and out around the, the field and, um, you know, in various different positions. So it was a completely different role, a winger, back then. Yeah, I guess it was. Um, I didn't play a whole lot of wing. I know I was winger. I was a winger in that grand final, so everyone just says I was a winger. But I sort of I liked myself more as a utility. I played a lot more centre and fullback. But um, it has changed a bit, uh, especially with the rules with the the corner post these days, where you can touch it. That can sort of get a lot more spectacular. But yeah, you probably would have had a few more tries in your career if that was the case. Um, after that, the club sort of, Canterbury, they sort of went downhill a bit, 89 to 91, your, your last few years with the club, you didn't make the finals, um, well, in any of those years, you had a, the playoff against um, West in, in Paramount Stadium, which was a question earlier. Um, a different time for the club, um, Gus was obviously at, at Penrith, um, how, what was it like in the culture? Was it tough to come back after that success of 88 and 89? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a big shock when it was kind of a shock, but it wasn't, that uh, when Phil Gould got punted from the club, um, and it was pretty obvious what was going on with Chris Anderson being Bullfrog's um, son-in-law. So, um, but, but it was, yeah, a lot of us were pretty well aligned with Gus, and um, Chris came on board, and um, I guess he didn't have the experience at that time that when he came over, so it was a bit different, but we had a good start in one of the years, and yeah, it sort of fell away, which was a bit tough, for sure. Who were some of the great players that you played with? Oh, played with um, Greg Alexander, Brad Fittler, you know, all the Canterbury team, you know, the, the Mortimers, the, the Lambs, Farrers, uh, Gillespie folks, you know, those sort of guys. Um, I still, you know, if we're at a reunion or something, I'm sort of still looking at all in them, you know. Yeah, so plenty of good players, for sure. Oh, well, those guys, again. Um, and then you look at the Canberra sides, you know, the Meningas and the Dalys and the Ricky Stewarts and, um, you know, Kenny and Sterling and stuff. So, um, Noel Cleel and blokes like that, you know. Yeah, guys like, you know, I still look up to, really. When you talk about highlights, I mean, probably 88's obviously almost the Everest, the peak. Was there anything else that sort of came close to that premiership success or, you know, was that was that the highlight for Glen Nissen? Uh, a highlight... Definitely was 87, when Graham Murray was at coach then. Uh, rest in peace, Graham, he was a, he was a lovely guy. Um, and then the, the comp in 88. So they were, they were the two big years, I, I can't compare anything to those two years. Um, and the, the celebrations after 88, they were something I'll never forget. We, uh, we, we got on the piss every night, like for a whole week. And like it was straight, wake up straight to another function, you know, sponsors putting everything on. And I remember um, a week after the grand final, we, we flew to New Zealand for our end of, end of season trip, but we were on our way to Hawaii, and we had to play, this is before Auckland came in the comp, we had to play a, a combined Auckland rep side on the Sunday, a week after we won the comp. And like, we'd been on the piss. I remember waking up on the on game day the next Saturday, and we were having these shots before the game. So it was just incredible. It was, um, and it was twenty thousand dollars for winner take all. Whoever won the game, and we've gone out. We we're, were just smashed. And I remember they kicked off. They kicked off, and it was just coming to me. And I just watched it bounce over. The, anyway, they, they nearly beat us. That, Five minutes to go, Auckland were beating us, and we'd won the comp the week before. And um, Langmack done something, we scored a try, we won the 20,000 bucks. We flew to Hawaii, and every day the club gave the players the money, and we just had like 2,000 bucks in the bar, 2,000 bucks in the bar the next day. And the last two nights, I just couldn't get a bed, I just had alcoholic poisoning, I just couldn't do it anymore. It was just too much. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure your daughter loves hearing those sort of stories. As, as, I mean, your daughter's here today doing a fantastic job taking photos and capturing the day. Yeah. Round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> does, does she sort of come up and say, Dad, you know, can you show us the 88 Grand Final or can you show us another game? Have you got a few games at home in the collection? 
She never says anything like that. But oh yeah, I couldn't wish for a better daughter. Absolutely. Very proud of her. Uh, you went back to Penrith in 92. Why the switch from Canterbury back to Penrith? Was was it something to unfinished business or what was the reasoning then? Um, I got the sack from Canterbury. That was, <laughs> that was a good reason. And um, yeah, Gus said come back for the year and they just won the comp in 91. So, you know, I was going back to a great side. You know, Alexander and Fiddler and Guyer and um, Cart Cartwright and that. Um, we started off the year really, really well, uh, and then Ben Alexander died. So, yeah, when Ben Alexander died, sort of the, the club sort of went in a bit of turmoil, uh, and that was pretty much the end of that year. Well, Glenn, you're a fantastic player. Always love watching you in, in, in rugby league for the Bulldogs, all the Panthers, and it's wonderful to have you here as part of Dan's NRL Collectibles Trivia Day. <laughs> Big round of applause for Bulldogs legend Glenn Nissen. We'll do another round of quiz questions and then some more interviews later on today.